and sustain with us. Now, insurance has been with man for ages. There are different accounts regarding the exact origin of insurance, but there is a universal agreement that the earliest insurance scheme were in the maritime trade properties and later life insurance. In Africa, the history of insurance is even more distorted. But one fact which remains unchallenged is that South Africa took the lead. Generally speaking, insurance is alien to the African culture. It was imported from European and other developed countries that colonized Africa. And perhaps that development explains the pathetic attitude of an average person of African extraction towards insurance. So as we sit with Adeolu Adewumiza, the Managing Director CEO of Alliance um, Insurance Nigeria Limited, for the concluding part of our CEO feature, we would be hearing firsthand what her experience has been running an insurance company in Nigeria, some of the challenges she has faced, and a possible forecast of what insurance will look like in, the, in Africa in the nearest future. Um, so before I bring in our guests, quickly, Uti, <laughs> let me come to Jennifer. You know my views. Are you insured? <laughs> <laughs> True question. Ooh, I'm Straight question. <laughs> Straight answer. No. Okay. Uti. What's my question? What do you think is wrong? Why she's not insured? Why is she not insured? Why are you not insured? Wow. Well, well. <laughs> I will not I assume there. Not I don't know. Well, so do you have a car? No. That's why. No, but there's other uh, kinds uh, of insurance. Compulsory insurance, motor. In, in Nigeria. Finish. Mm. Done. But why do you think that is, though? Because, I mean, when you go abroad, there's health insurance, mm. there's life insurance, there's, there's a lot of, you know, people insure their phones, they insure so many things, but we don't have that culture here, except maybe we go through some kind of crisis, then we now... We'll now go for the, the insurance packages. What, why do you see that? that uh, is I mean, there's several things from a lack of awareness. There's a trust issue that we've touched on in the past. There is the amount of disposable income. Um, as much as I hate to admit it, there's also the God factor. So, I mean, there's several reasons why people don't have insurance. It, it seems like a no-brainer to me, um, like I said earlier, but when we look at the realities of what we face in mm. the day-to-day, uh, a lot of people who even think they might benefit from insurance will tell you, oh, I will hear from you when it's time to pay premium. And then when it's time to pay claims, <laughs> then the stories will enter. And, you know, it's, it's an awareness thing because, of course, it's straightforward for me to assess your risk. It's, it's straightforward for me to give you a quote, you know, pay a premium. Mm -hmm. But if there's a gap between that process and me not getting you to understand what it takes um, at the time that you have a claim, because there's all this documentation uh -huh. you need to provide. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is uh, an education and awareness problem mm. in, in between, mm. because don't, don't give I me that face. Finish. Can finish. I at least get to my point? Um, such pressure. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at that point, uh, and particularly I'll use, for instance, a death claim. Mm. You know, the family is going through all sorts of range of, of emotion and, you know, sometimes people don't, and you know, Nigerians, we don't tend to be very open. So even some of the documents people don't have, you don't know where it is. So there are various reasons why you could end up in a situation where it may not even necessarily be that the claim, you know, the claim will eventually get paid. It's just the process then becomes lengthy and then very it sort of reinforces that negative experience. Mm. But all of that being said, I always ask the same question. Would you be out? Would you be rather, you know, rather be out of pocket? Would you want anything to? I mean, it depends on what you believe, you know, faith-wise, religion-wise. You know, would you want to be on the other side of whatever your faith, wherever your faith says you're going, knowing that you haven't taken care of your family and done the best that you could for mm -hmm. your family? So again, no-brainer. Please, okay, buy so insurance. Alliance Nigerian Insurance <laughs> Limited is a composite insurance company licensed to transact life and non-life insurance businesses in Nigeria. And as I mentioned earlier, the MD CEO is here, Adeolu Adeomi, and she's here live with us in studio as we take the conversations further, yes. talking insurance today. All right, so you heard our banter, you were just, you know, I think <laughs> we cracked you up. But me, people should, don't look at me as Uwa, look at me as the eight. 98% of Nigerians <laughs> that choose not to, to do anything called insurance. That's I am true. speaking on behalf of them. Mm -hmm. And I know that the average mindset, I mean, Uti touched on claims. And I think maybe that has been the biggest issue where people say, when it's time for you to collect my money, 
you collect my money free of charge. No stress, no whatever. You make it seamless to collect the money. And when it's time for you to now pay claims. But I think maybe that has been the biggest issue. But I, I know that um, insurance companies, they've really, really improved on that, you know, that part. You know, but generally, maybe we should start from the basic. What do you think the challenges are in terms of insurance? Why are Africans, you know, rated very, very low when it comes to insurance policy, picking up insurance policies, you know, and all of that? So first of all, let's differentiate because are we talking about Nigerians or are we talking about Africans? Huh. African across the continent has a four or five percent penetration insurance penetration rate, which is actually almost at par with the global average, mm -hmm. even a bit ahead. In Nigeria, however, the penetration is less than one percent. Wow. So it means when we talk about insurance penetration, we're talking about how much of the GDP is spent on insurance, mm. and it's less than 1% here in Nigeria, as opposed to South Africa, where it's in the double digits. It's like actually higher in South Africa than it is in many Western countries. So we're talking about 14, 15, 16% in South Africa. We even talk about in Kenya, 3%, Ghana, our neighbor almost next door, at even 2, 3%, here it's less than 1%. So are we talking Africa or are we talking about Nigeria? Okay, let us bring it home. <laughs> Where the Let's problem seems to be. So why don't, why don't Nigerians buy insurance? I would say, and Uti touched on probably all the topics actually in a nutshell, but I would say there are three, three areas. One is basically affordability. When you have 40% of our population living on less than $2 a day on 1,000 Naira a day, then how do you expect these people to if afford insurance? S secondly, we, we look at culture, the God factor. So we all, so Nigeria is a very religious country, whether we're talking about Christianity, whether we're talking about um, um, Islam, and we always feel that God will take care of us. Mm -hmm. So we don't need insurance because God will take care of us. In the same vein, I would tell you, we shouldn't go to the doctor then because God will take care of us. We shouldn't work out because God will take care of us. We shouldn't eat maybe because God will take care of us. But people look at that in a different way than they look at insurance. And then the third factor I would say is trust. That's a big thing. And how do you deal with trust? I mean, trust comes from a multi multitude of factors. It comes from a lack of knowledge. It comes from bad behavior of many insurance companies, I'll, I'll own up to that. And it comes from um, just the financial, the lack of financial literacy generally. You know, it, insurance should be part of your whole, how you manage your finances. And if you don't understand your finances, there are many literate, very literate people who are financially illiterate. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jennifer. I think that's the most powerful <laughs> part of that entire statement mm -hmm. is the financial literacy. Mm -hmm. But um, so far, how has an insurance company been able to break into the market? Let me use your company, for example. How were you able to break into the Nigerian market? How were you able to get people to start insuring their lives, their health, their properties and businesses and all of that? Well, I, w I would say that it was an alliance who had to break into the market and, and, and convince Nigerians to buy insurance. We, we, we broke in by buying a company in, in, in Nigeria. <laughs> That's the easy way to, to break into the Nigerian market. But how do we grow from where we, where we are today? And a lot of, of that, or all of it, has to do with really sitting with our customers and understanding what, are, what do they need today? What do they need in a post-COVID world? People are looking for simplicity. People are looking for easy to use. People are used to Amazon. They're used to Google. They're used to WhatsApp. They're used to you know Instagram. They're used to these very easy things. And then we come with our insurance packages with 100 page, uh, pages policy documents telling you that we need this, that, 100 items before we can insure you. And then you come to us with a claim, we need another 1,000 items to, mm -hmm. for you to prove before we give you the money back. We need to change that. Mm. That's reality. We need to change that if we want to break out of this 1% gut. Mm. You know, I, I loved what you said because I just penciled down that I think maybe because we're not, we've not, we're not innovative enough to bring tailored solutions, right? I have been robbed before. And I wish I had insured my phone. Mm -hmm. And now phones, you buy your phone, 500,000, 
I mean, if you want to really get a good phone, the high-end phone, 500,000, 800,000, you're buying a, a mobile phone, you're getting a laptop for about a, um, a million plus, you're getting, you know, a wristwatch and all of those things. Abroad, I mean, it is is a no-brainer. As you're picking it, you're picking up, you know, an insurance exactly. alongside mm -hmm. those things because anything can happen, mm -hmm. right? You know, so why are we not pushing, you know, towards that tailored solution where you look at an Uti, for instance, you profile her mm -hmm. and you say, you know what, I see Uti, is, she, she loves her gadgets, right? So why don't I sell that to her? And by the time she sees that benefit of mm. the gadgets and everything, Uti mm. will say, okay, how about that life insurance you talked about? I think mm -hmm. I want to take that up, you know? Mm -hmm. is, that, is it possible that that innovation is what we haven't seen with insurance company. I mean, I was I was laughing in the makeup room. There's one guy that used to come to my business place. His shoe is always filed on two sides. You know, <laughs> he wears. I don't want a particular insurance company. He wears what kind of uh, um, necktie? He's all sweaty, and he comes. You have body odor, and you are talking. My dad, you have to. I said, I don't want to buy insurance. You know, so I think that 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 image, you know, is stuck in my head. So it is so hard, you know, because. Uh, you have to be packaged. I, I mean, why did banks, why did they do so well? They branded their marketers. It made it, you know, you know, you come with your clean car, you're coming down from an air-conditioned car and all of that. But with insurance company, I've not seen that. Maybe I don't know about Alliance, but I haven't seen that. So maybe those kind of structured, you know, mm -hmm. that innovation, is, is that what is missing? It's a good point. And <laughs> so it, there's this term called embedded in insurance. And mm -hmm. I think that's now the fancy term for what they used to call it in the past. But it's really about basically embedding insurance into your daily life. Mm -hmm. So like you said, you pick up a phone and the, the manufacturer will already maybe for a few cents say that for, you know, for the million, you add a few Naira mm -hmm. and then you already have the insurance coverage, mm -hmm. right? Or, um, or you buy a car and when you as you drive off the car lot, you already it's already insured mm -hmm. because you've already purchased that insurance as alongside, part, yes. alongside the car. And this is and as you said, this is done very well in many other countries, not so well in this part of the world. And we need to work with regulation and our regulators because we do have some restrictions that make it more difficult to have that kind of insurance here. Mm -hmm. And this is our, our responsibility as insurers uh, with our regulators to then change that market so we can make it easier for our customers. Absolutely. Uti. <laughs> so, <laughs> as Uwa has attempted to make it sound like insurance has no innovation, <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to please enlighten, please the enlighten, enlighten me. Yes. <laughs> about affordability because that's one of the major things that you talked about and microinsurance is one of those things mm -hmm. that um, is a solution for you know people who don't have as much disposable income but still allows them to protect themselves and I know Nigeria we're still in a slow burn of uh, micro insurance but mm -hmm. of course other markets that you've um, worked in there have been success so maybe yep. start to share a little bit about what micro insurance could offer. Yeah, so what micro insurance does is that it really targets the infamous bottom of the pyramid uh, so targeting not really the bottom bottom, but uh, the people who are earning between two and ten dollars a, a day. And, uh, and, and usually the products are costing a, a dollar a month. That's something that's very affordable for someone in, in that uh, salary range. So we have uh, companies in, in Kenya, for example, who are, because to be able to sell at that level, you need to have very low cost. And how do you have low cost when you're trying to sell to the masses? You can't have sweaty agents with filed down shoes uh, trooping around to everywhere. You need those people too, but that doesn't get out to everyone. But what does everyone have? What do you have? What do you have in front of you? What do you have? Mm -hmm. You have a phone. Mm -hmm. And most people, the, 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 the mobile phone penetration rate in Nigeria is um, at last count 50, 60, 70 percent. And so imagine if you could hit 50, 60, 70 percent of the market via their phones. Mm -hmm. And this is the innovation that is coming to many markets. It's, it's in Ghana with a company called Bima. It's in Kenya with a co company called Blue Wave. And it's also coming to Nigeria. It has, to come, it has to, Nigeria. to come to Nigeria. I agree. <laughs> you know, I was going to say that, you know, yesterday we touched on leadership, right? And I think, you know, the highest show of leadership for a leader, you should be proactive. Mm -hmm. And when I see insurance, I see you being proactive. You thinking, 
about two two years from now what's going to happen you know so even as a family person you know you're thinking what if something happens tomorrow i'm no longer here mm -hmm. something has to take care of my family that i'm leaving mm -hmm. behind right mm -hmm. that ability to think and project that things might go wrong so is it possible that um our bad culture <laughs> of leadership is also what has eaten deep into that mindset where you do not think about the next person because insurance is just you caring about what happens to these people when I'm no longer here, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm not here and um, maybe my wife has to drive and something happens, her car or, you know, your child, you will just take up those insurance policies because... So is it possible to link bad leadership <laughs> and our poor culture of insurance? <laughs> well everything can be linked back to bad leadership mm -hmm. and it's not about bad leadership uh, at a political level uh, company no. level in a family but all it, levels all levels mm. if, if you have the tone is set at the top that's an infamous <clears throat> phrase and so if if you if you don't have someone who can set the vision set the path how do you who should the, the people below that person then lead uh, a follow and then they, they will just go in their own way mm -hmm. try to follow their own path find their own path but the minute you have a leader who can say, this is the way we should go, this is the vision that I have for you, do you buy into it? Yes, I buy into it. Then let's all go together and, and, and grab that. And, and so even in, in, the, in the insurance industry, we also need to have strong leaders in the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. We need to have strong leaders in the insurance regulators. Mm -hmm. And we need to not just rely on the strong leadership within Nigeria, but also look to see what other countries are doing with their strong leadership and bring that also into our own country. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so wait, Jennifer, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do part two. Okay. We will take a very short break. When we return, we we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back.